going back into the off season and just talking about these coaches that um, were available. And I, I, Jim Harbaugh is the one that screams at me because I feel like that was the most realistic hire that the bears could have probably had this off season. I don't know how realistic it was just because Jim Harbaugh probably did want to go to California and have Justin Herbert and not have to deal with a rookie quarterback, but there is an identity. There is like two identities in LA with the chargers, a team that never had identity that never played a certain type of way. They run the fuck out of the ball. They're a top five defense. And Justin Herbert as a guy who used to throw 50 passes a game is now down to like 20 to 25. That's exactly what you're asking Caleb Williams to be and the type of team that you want him on. And there's just zero, and I mean zero identity to this team. It used to be defense. And at this point, I wouldn't even say that. It's not running the ball. It's not Caleb Williams and shotguns and, and spreading the ball out and things like that. But it, it's, I don't know where to go from here. And that it's more conversation, but the identity part is, is disgusting to me. I, you know, I was a big Dan Quinn fan. I really wanted Dan Quinn to come to Chicago experience head coach, took a team to the super bowl, did great in Dallas. I mean, look at Dallas now without him. Dallas is talk about no identity. Dallas is just a mess. You pay all those guys and they're just not even doing anything. I wanted Dan Quinn to, um, come and hang, not hang out. He, I wanted him to coach the bears. I think he would have been a good choice because he has a defensive mind, but he also respects the offense and he brought in Cliff Kingsbury. You know what I mean? I think that Dan Quinn would have been the great choice for this team, especially if the bears wanted that defensive identity, but also keeping a guy that could with experience and has a ton of networking to bring in a top guy. Matt Eberflus can't establish and identify talent anywhere. It feels except a defensive perspective, but from a coaching perspective, Shane Waldron, you chose him over Cliff Kingsbury, the guy that was Caleb Williams, offensive coordinator. Come on. It was, it was a no brainer. And Cliff Kingsbury wanted to come here. That's because, what I find most crazy. Because it creates a threat. And we talked about this during the off season where we said, Hey, you get another guy in here. What you need is you need another guy on the offense. That's pretty much a head coach in his own way, because you're not involved in the offense, right? You're, you're defensive focus. So you're really trusting Shane Waldron to do a lot right now, but you could trust the guy that has more experience, but what does that do? That creates a threat. So in a situation like right now, Matt Eberflus is getting fired because you do have somebody that can replace him. That's adequate in Cliff Kingsbury. Whereas Shane Waldron isn't that. So now we're looking at it as like, okay, we're handicapped with this guy till the end of the year. And I think that that might've been part of, the uh, um, thought process behind that decision-making. But at the same time, you should not be threatened by your offensive coordinator taking your job if you're a damn good coach, right? Yeah, or if you're like, just objectivist to win. Right. Uh, Matt Eberflus is not an alpha. I, th I think we can, I think it sounds like that's kind of the message. The guy has no cojones. Like he has no confidence it, it, in himself. It, it's not so much that it's like, I don't even want to get into that. Cause there's, small, plenty of, like, so, there's plenty of like, so there's plenty of, there's plenty of like, under the radar type of coaches that don't really make a bunch of noise, but they at least feel comfortable in their decision-making or their, their schemes that they don't have to make a lot of noise. Lovey Smith and Tony Dungy. And I feel like those are guys from the past, but like Mike Tomlin doesn't do a lot of talking. He just does. He just acts yeah, Jim, Jim Harb, uh, John Harbaugh. I'm sorry. I always get him confused. John Harbaugh on the Ravens. He doesn't do a lot of talking. He just does. He's just a great manager. He's a great CEO type. And Matty Riflus never demonstrated any of those skills, but yet he kind of got that opportunity to, to do it again. And we, we never really wanted him back to begin with, but it is what it is. Um, Dan Quinn was a guy that I considered during the off season as well. Just and due to his head coaching experience. He's a and you know, Super Bowl. he went up 28 to three, but there is something to be said with having an experienced guy come in here and having the staff underneath him. That's also experienced instead of trying this crapshoot thing where we're taking like Luke Getzey, who's never been an offensive coordinator and giving him an opportunity or we're taking... twice in the last 10 months, by the way. Right. <laughs> Nick, Nick yeah. I've asked this over and over, like who's got the worst coaching staff in the NFC North. And for the people that were not picking the bears, it's like, you understand we replaced both our coordinators. Anybody could have had Shane Waldron. If he's all that great. And yeah, you know what I mean? Him. Right. Right. I, I, I just, I don't understand what the bears obsession is like, we're going to find the next best great thing. No, go find 
the great thing and get it for your roster. You're the fourth biggest market, third biggest market in the NFL. And, you know, I mean, 30, what was it? 39% of tickets for the Arizona game was bought by Illinois natives. I mean, your team just travels so well and you have such a big fan base. Give them a winner. Don't give them an experiment. We're tired of experiments. We want something. We want something now. And, you know, Bill Belichick's out there. I don't know if I would want him. Coaching choices. And what do you think the realistic next hire is? Because I think we both agree at this point, Matt Eberflus is out. Matt Eberflus is out. I mean, you never won a football game on a Sunday, which 90% of your games are played on Sunday. (laughs) I'm sorry, road games, road road games. You know, Flus does have that nine game home winning streak. He changed the culture of winning in Chicago because Chicago was not winning a lot of ball games before he came to Chicago at home, which is where you should win. Not saying Matt Eberfus is going to stay because of that reason. You're going to go 500 every single year, unless you get nine home games then you'll be nine and eight. The bears, the bears need to find a way to bring in an experienced head coach with a proven record and win. A lot of people want Ben Johnson and Dave. You're like, we're not going to pay him. We're, there's no way he's going to want 15 million plus 20, 20 million yeah. plus. I mean, no doubt about it, but also you have a stacked and I mean stacked offense over in Detroit. And it only got better when David Montgomery went over there, missed that guy every single day. I, I, I if we bring in Ben Johnson, it's another experiment that makes me super nervous. And mm-hmm. Ben Johnson would have to bring all of Detroit's assistance with him for there to be a shot. Cause Dan Campbell is a great head coach. He respects his coordinators and his coordinators lead off of his example. If I were to go out and get a head coach right now from any team that's experienced, I mean, any or anyone with experience, I'm looking at cliff Kingsbury because he has Ooh. coached in this league. He has won in this league. He went back to college. He learned a thing or two. He got the job done. Second guy I'm looking at is Brian Flores experienced head coach. Got the job done in Miami. Obviously, the whole thing went down. Goes to Minnesota. You want a defensive winning head coach. Brian Flores is your guy. He knows the division. He understands the Vikings. He understands every single team that he's gone against, and he's proven that he can keep up with all of them. I mean, the Minnesota game with Detroit went down to the wire. The Green Bay game with Minnesota. Look what happened there. This guy leads by example. People are going to want to play for him. This defense is so young and good and under contract that if you bring in a guy like Brian Flores who shows emotion on the field, who gets fired up, who likes his players, that's a, Brian Flores is by far my number one right now if we go with experience. Then it's Cliff Kingsbury because he has a connection with Caleb Williams. Cliff Kingsbury is obviously having success. He knows how to get the job done. We're seeing that with Jane Daniels. We saw that with Kyler Murray. Those are my two guys. But if you go with the experiment, it's Ben Johnson. Um, my... It's funny because David last week said that Matt Eberflus is the sixth best head coach in the NFC North. He is. He is the sixth. Be- I, Dave, I could not agree more with you. I really, I really agree with you there. Yeah. Um, my number one choice by a, with a bullet is Kevin Stefanski. And then I want um, Ben Johnson as my experiment. And then defensive coordinators, I think there's just so many decent ones that you could probably pick up right now. If you could get Mike Vrabel and or uh, even Robert up. even Robert Sala as a defensive coordinator. Sala um, signed with the Packers, didn't he? He's no, a, he's a he's consultant. A consultant. Oh, okay. Vrabel's yeah. a consultant with Cleveland too. See how that worked gotcha. out. Um, <laughs> like so, I think my 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 number one with a bullet is you get Kevin Stefanski as your uh, head coach and you, you bring along Mike Vrabel. They already have that connection in Cleveland. You bring in Mike Vrabel as a, as a defensive coordinator. I think that's a, the only issue I have with that is we go back to the McCaskey interference. I think that's too much uh, straightforward opinions and too many men. I I don't know how to explain it other than a man's opinion uh, in front of George. (laughs) So this is my second part. And then this is a two part question. I feel like Ryan Poles. Sorry, I love it. Ryan Poles, (laughs) Ryan Poles has, and I'm a fan. Don't get me wrong, but I we put a video out, probably what like three months ago, four months ago, where I started, I started being dubious about the Ryan Poles era. And minus the one trade, it's you know, it's not been a great track record. What is the new timetable? Because that they keep kind of just pushing the buck 
or passing the buck and kind of pushing the timetable based on a new thing. I don't see the Washington commanders doing a timetable. I don't see the Texans doing a timetable. We need an extra year or two of development or more draft picks or whatever. No, we're fucking winning now. And this is how we're going to do it. And then, so that's my question is what is the bears new timetable in your opinion after this year to keep his job and for, you know, what is our new timetable of success? Because what are we talking about here? Are we going to say next year we're hiring a new coach instant success? which is what it should be in my opinion. And then the second one is people kept talking about Ryan Poles always, you know, not doing things because he doesn't want to get fired. Cause in my mind, every GM gets two coaches and two quarterbacks. That's just the, that's the basic timeline of GM. If they're doing a half decent job, did Ryan Poles extend his life as a GM by keeping Matt Eberflus or did he dig more of a grave? Because that was my opinion is if you had hired a coach last year and you had restarted that timetable for yourself by hiring a new coach, at least you could say you're you're trying. You're doing something innovative. You're putting something out there. Did he shorten his timetable by keeping Eberflus? Because in my mind, he did. Now it's, it's instant. If the next guy doesn't work out, you're fucked. And then what is your new timetable? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do so I can say whatever I want. I'm going to put on my really big sunglasses so they can't identify me. So, man, we got we got the ski goggles on right now. So, in regards to your first question, the timetables, was that your first question? Or- yeah, yeah. It's like okay. a two-parter. It's like an all-in-one. So, Ryan Poles bought himself time by drafting Caleb Williams. I don't think keeping Matt Eberfuss does anything. You said, it, you said it best. You get two quarterbacks, you get two head coaches. Well, you got two quarterbacks now. Actually, really three, because you had Tyson Bajan in there at one point. But not by not by choice. Ryan Poles bought himself one more season. That's it. It's a win now moment. It's next year, it's win or you're gone. There, there's no doubt about it. You have to go out, you have to go and get offensive linemen. You have to protect your quarterback, your quarterback, your second quarterback. People need to look at the situation. And I guarantee you, Poles in his meetings was like, hey. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get every weapon possible for Caleb. We're going to do everything. We're going to get everything across the board so people can evaluate him. The league can watch, and we're going to see how Floos does. We're going to see how Shane does. If they, you know, shit the bed, they got one more chance, okay? So I think that the Bears, Ryan Poles has one more year in him in regards to winning and everything else. The, The commanders have done it. They have won right away by getting a new head coach. That example right there, number one versus number two quarterback, showed the McCaskies and showed Kevin Warren, you have one more chance. That's it. So I got Ryan Poles one more year because he gets one more head coach. Here's my issue, though, is that the Bears could then go and let's say they don't win. They bring in Brian Flores. They bring in Cliff Kingsbury, Ben Johnson, Vrabel, anybody along the lines that we've talked about, and they don't win, fire everybody. Literally clear house, start it new, because this roster is still an average of 25 and a half years old. It's a very young roster. It gets things done. They have so much untapped potential if they can stay healthy. That's another problem. There's so many factors that's keeping Ryan Poles here. Poles has done a good job. You know, the Nate Davis signing, that was a that was a that was not good. The Chase Claypool trade, that was not good. Poles was also a rookie GM. But you got to look at everything else that he's done. He's brought in Caleb Williams, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, re-signed Cole Komet, brought in DeAndre Swift. Um, you go to the defensive side of the ball, Andrew Billings, Javon Dexter, Montez Sweat, you know, Jarrell Taylor. Tremaine There's Evans. enough good to point at for sure. There's way more. The, the good definitely outweighs the bad from a roster perspective. But we talked about this in the very beginning of the show, is that Poles did not have a say in this situation for the head coach. If it would have been his first head coach, and he got all this talent, and it's still in this situation, then maybe it would be this year. But I think he does have one more head coach in him. That's that's all I got for polls. I'm not losing faith in him, but if it if they crap the bet again next year, then it's time to can polls. Nick, I know you're limited on time. One of the things that we mentioned last week was, um, you know, uh, David said something along the lines of, you know, when you come when you go and face the Packers, like Matt LaFleur is stealing your lunch. And I brought up, (laughs) Hey, you know, that Matt Eberflus and Matt LaFleur got together at that basketball game during the off season. Go, you know, Eberflus was the one that bought those tickets. You know what I mean? Like he paid for all that. That's on him. And um, I mentioned that to one of my friends yesterday that was over at my house. 
And he's like, you think he sat next to him going, come on, man, give me one of your plays. Give me one of your plays. And, and Matt LaFleur was like, all right, try this no. one. Backup no. center, fullback dive. <laughs> yeah, and Matt LaFleur definitely was sitting sitting at home on his couch going, this idiot. Oh, this little bitch. So.